Today I want to continue my commentary on Cain to the True Kabbalah. I want to take a little more critical look this time and uh, uh, compare it to the Book of Aries. Okay? Now, first off, uh, I fell in love with Barden through initiation of the Hermetics, just straight off the path. And then later I read PME and KTQ. PME, eh, I didn't care for much as my uh, own words on evocation uh, kind of make plain. Um, but KTQ I just also fell in love with because I saw something in it unique in the literature. But I was struck by how different initiation in Hermetics is compared to KTQ. In Initiation into Hermetics, Bardon gives us the tools. <laughs> we have this whole array of tools that we use and develop. We're developing ourselves. We're not following a dogma. We're, he's not telling us oh, how we have to think, what we have to believe, etc. He's giving us the tools for us to discover all those things ourselves, for us to discover the universe, and for us to participate with the universe. But in K2Q, it's totally different. He's giving us a very dogmatic set of symbols that we must learn, that we must incorporate into our being. Because that's what you do in K2Q. The initial exercises are there to lay down new neural pathways in your brain and change you. They change you at a physical level, they change you at an astral level, and they change you at a mental level. And the, the point is to change you in a specific way to becoming a specific predetermined type of individual so that you are then capable of working with the letters in uh, the way of KTQ. Okay? That's the preparatory work. It is there to transform you. It's, it's just like learning Tai Chi. You sort of stumble through it at the beginning, but you keep practicing over and over and over. And it becomes more and more fluid, and everything about you changes. It's the same thing. <clears throat> that laying new neural pathways. <clears throat> okay. So... That's all that the initial part of KTQ deals with, is a set of symbols. A very dogmatic set of symbols that is not objectively based, okay? There are so many different versions of this set of symbols. All of them by, you know, profound people that knew what they were talking about. So the point is, it's not the symbols themselves that matter, it's what you are doing with those symbols and the way you are treating them that produces the effects, okay? And all of those ways that you are treating the, the symbols for the letters come from initiation into hermetics, okay? But you're not learning anything new. You're just applying them in a slightly new way towards a different goal, which is this pre-programmed transformation of your three bodies, okay? Now, uh, I mean, you don't 
really learn anything um, <clears throat> in this initial process. You don't really start to learn things until you get to uh, working with the keys themselves, working with the letters Kabbalistically. Then, I mean, this is uh, very transformative. Just read, for example, the description of the uh, uh, first single key, A. Just read that and imagine what that will do to you as a person. What that will do to your understanding. That's utterly transformative. Um, but that doesn't occur until perhaps years down the line as you're working, developing these symbols, giving these symbols a central meaning. Because, like I said, they're not objective symbols. How to put it? Uh, They're not universal. They apply, can apply, in some cases, um, <clears throat> according to certain cultural norms. But outside of those cultural norms, outside of a purely human context, they are irrelevant. JTQ is pure, purely human. It's a purely human construct. Just like the elements are a human construct, but they relate to objective forces in the universe, and because we approach those objective forces in this way of the human construct, we can grasp those forces and make use of those forces via the elements, okay? Same thing is happening with KTQ. The symbols you're attaching to the letters, the, the meaning that you are filling these letters with <clears throat> enables you to connect with universal forces. But it's not until you truly connect with those universal forces that any transformation really occurs. Any serious transformation. Some side effects of working with the colors and the tones it has a transformative effect beyond just the physio astromental effect of uh, uh, you know changing your bodies. No transformation in terms of things that take you forward. Okay. <clears throat> so again, that's how it varies from initiation into hermetics, because throughout initiation into hermetics, you are stepping forward, constantly moving forward. But with the initial work of KTQ, it's very repetitive, really. Um, very sort of uninspiring. Um, um, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> as I said, KTQ <clears throat> based solely on these symbols, all centered around the uh, human pronunciation of these 27 letter and vowel sounds, okay? That's the basic framework for um, the symbols that KTQ deals with. <clears throat> now, this, these are very arbitrary. Um, this is only 27 of the who knows how many sort of vocalizations that the human mouth is capable of, that exist in the various languages spoken in the world. But again, 
it's a totally human thing. This is completely human. It has... <clears throat> it has a limited relevance to the whole universe. See, the symbols in KTQ are somebody else's symbols. They're not your symbols. They're not my symbols. They're somebody else's symbols that we are being asked to use and make magical through the techniques that we're using. Okay? But they're not my symbols. They're not your symbols. Some of them might be. Some of them make sense. Others don't. And the ones that make sense, there's like five other, you know, opinions on <laughs> what they actually mean. So it's very subjective and very arbitrary. It's also, I mean, in initiation into hermetics, it's all about my experience. You know, here, it's about somebody else's experience in the far distant past. You know, somebody with their own ideas, somebody with their own perceptions. Somebody with their own biases, with their own cultural influences, etc. You know, from a different moment in time than right here and now. With KTQ, I was left just questioning everything. You know, everything about it. <clears throat> because I needed that, that uh, objective validation in order to comfortably work with this set of symbols that I've been given. Uh, eventually I came to peace with that in the realization that with this set of symbols worked within this way, you get this result. That's its cookbook, basically. <clears throat> Add these ingredients, and here you go. <clears throat> but, you know, just like with PME, I'm not satisfied with that, you know? I, I look back on the world, and back in time, and... <clears throat> All these wonderful things that we've done, you know, uh, seemingly wonderful, magical, powerful things at the time, have led us here. And to my mind, that says, well, we need to do something different. Something maybe entirely different than the same old thing. The same old thing led us here. And I don't see that that can take us forward out of here. <clears throat> that just doesn't seem to flow logically to me. So we need to do something different. And that's where my Book of Aries comes in. Where KTQ is the Kabbalah of letters. It's all about the letters, the symbols. It's the Kabbalah of symbols and letters. Letters that are symbols. Letters that hold things. The Book of Aries is the Kabbalah of essential meaning, which is a totally objective perception that is not a human thing. It is a universal thing, and it is immediate, now, present, in the moment.
So, in many respects, my Book of Aries is a response to Key to the True Kabbalah <clears throat> as a statement that, well, there is another way of uh, affecting the universe significantly in not necessarily strictly human ways. Because the effects that you achieve through KTQ are very humanocentric. <clears throat> But what we need now <laughs> is more universal than that. We need <clears throat> powers to heal things, powers to recreate things, well, powers to create new things. Um, we mostly need powers to heal. <clears throat> And working with essential meaning, well, symbols are symbols. It's a great saying, symbols are not the thing. That's a very fundamental <clears throat> hermetic idea. The symbol is not the thing. You have to always look beyond the symbol till you reach the objective Thing. Symbols are always subjective masks, as it were, that seek to express the fullness of the thing, but a symbol can never express it. They, they get the mind moving in a specific direction, but they don't express the fullness of the thing. So, with the magic of essential meaning, we're dealing with the thing itself. We're looking into the universe and perceiving the objective essence within. And, you know, in the book of Aries, there is also this long preparatory work before you get to really working with essential meaning in that way. And it has, in great extent, in great part to do with the perception of essential meaning and perceiving enough essential meaning that you see and understand how everything goes together. You know, and, that's not quite the right way of putting it, but uh, <clears throat> it's hard to describe. Um, everything fits. Everything makes a sense, as it were. Um, <clears throat> because you see how essential meaning fits into essential meaning, fits into essential meaning, and how it all comes together. And eventually, once you have studied the universe enough, you can participate with that essential meaning. It's not, <clears throat> it's not like the Kabbalistic effects, which can be uh, miraculous, uh, you know, splitting of the sea kind of miraculous. Um, with the magic of essential meaning, it's more participating than it is <clears throat> Kazumba. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, that's again a hard to describe the difference. Um, <clears throat> it's more organic, it's more of a participation than it is an outright creation. Um, although that is possible with the magic of essential meaning as well. It's just generally not necessary. Um, <clears throat> with the magic of essential meaning, ultimately, 
you become various essential meanings. From your perceptions, you understand that there is this sort of essential meaning in the universe. So, to work with that essential meaning, you become that essential meaning and you express that essential meaning. Okay? There is no becoming in KTQ. No becoming at all. <clears throat> Again, it's very much a cookbook. <laughs> Add these ingredients and you get this result. <clears throat> With the magic of essential meaning, it's the ultimate of creativity. Because every action in the magic of essential meaning is creative. You are creating, but you're doing it in partnership with what already is. You're not telling what is, you will really change now. No, you're participating with it. And that, to my mind, is one of the things that it has been wrong with the old way of doing it. You know, that's how we approach everything pretty much. You know, get out of my way. You know, you're gonna do it this way. And that's a very human at this point um, approach to the universe. Um, <clears throat> but magic of essential meaning is much more fluid. Um, and har harmonious <laughs> in the, than uh, that of Kabbalah. So, <clears throat> I hope this has given you a, a slightly broader perspective on KTQ, uh, what it truly is and truly is going to do to you if, if you follow it. Um, it's very worthwhile, definitely worthwhile. Um, but I'll just say <laughs> there, there are alternatives um, and you know I just always encourage people to think out of the box so um, there you go <laughs> okay I think that's it for KTQ now <laughs> bye bye